and welcome to Symphony of the Night. This is my friend Saber. Yes, I am the voice of Wallace. <laughs> Fear me. So I hear this game is pretty good. I can confirm it. As somebody who's beaten this game like a gazillion times. I may or may not have done a blind let's play of it. That was really funny. I'm if kidding. I recall, I think that animation was used exactly only for this game. <laughs> I'm probably remembering wrong. There's probably some Japan-only Konami game that used this. Oh, yeah. Or A, so... I guess they're not going to do the luck run. <laughs> Was that like you use a certain name and uh well, actually the Castlevania series loves that where they you went and yeah, a certain um, name and you get like different player stats or just different player characters. Yeah, um the name that you enter for the luck run is the same you enter for the level select in Rondo of Blood. <laughs> of course. There's also uh Richter mode in this game, I believe. Yeah, if you get a full playthrough clear on your save file, you can enter your name as Richter, and you can go through the game as Richter. That that castle looks like it's not textured. It probably is not. This is early PlayStation CG. That lighting, that is something else. Again, um, early 3D PlayStation. Oh. Things that aged best. <laughs> you can fuck around with that loading yes as you can see here <laughs> I love when they do stuff like that Konami loves doing silly touches like that and I love them for it by the way um, that castle is a 3D object I should note that this game's style this game is technically a, it may look 2D but it's technically a 3D these sprites are like textures on polygons so you get to see a lot of really weird effects that they love to screw around with, with in this game. Oh, yeah, yeah. And also why this was a nightmare to port on Saturn. And probably shouldn't have been possible in the first place. Die, monster. You don't belong in this world. Hi, Chris. It was not by my hand that I'm once again given flesh. I was called here by humans. Who wish to pay me tribute? I can't interrupt this, it's tribute. too good. You steal men's souls and make them your slaves. Perhaps yes, that's how stealing works. All religions. Nice zinger. Your words are as empty as your soul. Mankind I mean, me I guess Dracula and I have you. distaste towards organized what religion in common. A miserable little pile of secrets. But enough talk. How about you? I do love how he... I like this Dracula voice better than the redub in the PSP, honestly. <laughs> it's a good delivery on that last line. I'll give him that. Actually, also, like... Not a bad voice, it's just that the writing is very stiff. Yeah, um... Very awkward translation. Also, like, the PSP redub version of Dracula just sounds too friendly. So, this is basically the same final fight in Rondo of Blood. Oh, he took a hit. So, there are things that affect Alucard's stat in this fight. If you take damage, you get less HP than you would, and your starting HP decreases. If you let yourself die, um, Maria revives you, and when you play the normal game, you get a, a potion. <laughs> this game is super weird. Like... All things considered, like, it's the start of this, like, whole genre, basically. But it's also just strange as hell. Oh, this is experimental to the max, and I love this game to death for that. So, they're not even trying to improve Alucard's stats here. Normally, I just spam Hydra Storm and empty everything so that I get the heart refresh. Also, that background effect. 
Oh, this thing that never emulated properly. Indeed. So, in the Japanese version, this text crawl would be narrated in German, I believe? What? what? Yeah. And then the PSP re-release, it would be just... It, there would be a narration, but it would be in English. Shaft. Not the best name to give a character, especially one I'm supposed to take seriously. Oh man, it's Marie. <laughs> I'm genuinely surprised it's not by the same voice actor group as the Sonic Adventure and Evil Zone games. <laughs> Although we do, we had Chris, so we do have some familiar actors. Yeah. By the way, I love this game so much. I not only have still held on to the physical version, but I also have the PSN version on both the US and the Japanese store, and I also have the PSP re-release. I have a copy that Soap sent me like 10 years ago, and I was supposed to give it back to him by now. <laughs> It'll be his payment for, I don't know. Also, a physical copy of this game has been price gouged to hell. Don't even bother, just get it on PSN before the store closes. Well, even means, if there are uh, emulator issues. I can make a pretty penny off of it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, straighten up. No messing around. Oh. So this HUD is kind of confusing to look at until you see it in action. The HP is obvious. The hearts are sub-weapons, and that seizure bar is your MP, because you can cast spells in this game. Yeah, the, the HUD in this is, like, not great. Like, it makes sense once you get used to it. It's just not very intuitive, just because hearts is such a weird thing for not health. Like, when I saw this in, like, magazines back in the day, I tried to make heads and tails out of what the fuck these values were supposed to represent. I got hearts because I've played Castlevania pro proper. HP, I could assume, is HP, but what the fuck was the seizure meter? Yeah, because, like... So I see the player didn't... The, uh, the spells aren't, like, actually... Are they actually told to you in any way, or do you just have to, like learn them somehow. You buy the in inputs from the librarian, or you can just enter the inputs. Ah. Uh. What is your business here? I've come to put an end to this. I also prefer this voice to the PSP redub big time. And I demand you cease your terrible voice acting. <laughs> Although, the Alucard voice is actually good. Like, it's appropriately brooding, unlike the PSP redub, which is just Gennaro anime protagonist. I like the death could just take your items. He's just like, I'm taking these. You can... You can very easily skip that. Even more easily in the PSP version where you can just enter and then immediately exit and then it'll just fuck up the death trigger. Wait, they really did it? Oh my god. But in the normal version, if you want to skip that, what you do is just take off all your equipment and let a warg just hit you and send you flying all the way into that area past the trigger. It's like a shine spark, but, like, also a, a damage boost. It's amazing. I should mention that, um, this game being played by, like, a really good player is quite a sight to behold, because it is amazingly broken. There's there's a lot of jankiness going on in this. Like, I don't know when or if we'll ever see it, but 
Like, in, you get, like, food items, right? Like, this, it's got, like, JRPG elements where you've got, like, uh, turkey or whatever. And you can just eat it to heal. But you don't just eat it out of your inventory. You put it in your hand, and then you drop it on the ground in order to pick it up. And it's like, that's amazing. That is obtuse as shit. And you don't even really need to heal anyway with these items because healing is just generous from the save rooms alone. And then we just factor in the magic you get, like Soul Steel, which is a raising storm motion because magic in this game uses fighting game motions. Did they put a pretzel in this? I remember the motions are pretty weird. Yeah. Yeah, um, Soul Steel is a pretzel motion. And then we have the spirit, which we just saw, which was back, forward, up, down, and attack. So it's the Kusur Gito 360. Oh. Kinda. Let's say that's like Karnov's balloon move, isn't it? That too. Oh yeah, you just saw a little bit of backdash spamming there. It is faster to backdash than it is to just run around. Which actually frustrates Iga, because the animators worked so hard on his fucking run cycle. Yeah. Like, they put the backdash stuff in Bloodstained only under fan demand. <laughs> also, I should point out this music's fucking great, and also why this video is unmonetizable, because Konami takes its music very seriously. Oh man, I really wanted to make money off this too. I know. Our partnership has been ruined. With this video I just basically stole from somebody else. <laughs> it's got like this... Well, it's kinda non-linear. Like, you can just go around, but... You still have, like, an order in which you were supposed to do things, although... Yeah. I don't remember how, uh, sequence break you can get with this game without, like, doing some Very. glitches. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Oh. Well, even without glitches, still very. Oh, man. But, there's the Sword Brothers spell. If we ever get the sword familiar, I'll explain more about it. But let's just say, there's a spell in this game that lets you go above like, way above the 200.06% map tiles that this game has. Oh, jeez. All sorts of weird shit you can do. Okay, so... First boss, which, if you played Castlevania 4 before, you would call bullshit. But no, they're a lot easier than they were in Castlevania 4. <laughs> I mean, I did play that game, I just wasn't very good at it. Normally what I would do is just take the knife item and then just pull up Armageddon Serena on their ass. After a Tetra Spirit, of course. Which is hold up and then half circle from up to downward and attack. Oh, Behemoth Typhoon. Hell yeah. Yes. In this Behemoth Typhoon, you can just throw a bunch of spirits with faulty homing. Dark Metamorphosis, which is a SNK Ranbu motion, if I recall. So, yeah, Life steal, there are a few, yeah, against the few enemies in this game that bleed. Oh. This game is full of just bizarre rules. That's what I love Indeed. about it. It's like, like, none of, nothing about it, like, makes it not fun. It's just really funny, like, the more you <laughs> learn about it. Also, you got the sunglasses, which, for whatever arbitrary reason, decreases your intelligence by one. <laughs> some, uh, some commentary right there. You can block out the sun, but you look stupid! Yeah, probably. Like, who knows what's been going through their minds during the development of this game, because... There's some really interesting things going on with this game's design. Um, you were already there. Oh no, the minus one intelligence is taking effect on Alucard. <laughs> I 
I, there's this one piece of headgear I can't wait for the player to get. <laughs> I love the backdash. It never gets old. For whatever reason, as a kid, I've always called it the sandpaper walk. Oh, because of the sound it makes? Probably. But even as a kid, I knew that that was the optimum way to travel. Also, it's fun. It's a good walk cycle, the... I'll give him that. I, I love the sound the bloody zombies make. It's a it's good sound design in this game in general. Yeah. So yeah, most of the sub-weapons are neat, but not really all that useful. I forgot about this one, jeez. Yeah, we have the holy, um... Marble? <laughs> Don't think this one came back much. No. There's a lot of just weird ones that are exclusive to this game. Like... Yeah, oh. there's this one, the holy throw paper squares on the floor. So you just, like, throw rice at them, or...? I... I'm guessing, yeah, it's like that church... No, I think it's ashes. Oh, Holy what? ashes. And it's like holy water, but shitty. D great. Oh, I love this track so much. Me too. I do remember, like, there's a lot, uh, at the very least, like, back in the day when this game came out, there was a lot of, like, hubbub about the fact that, you know, PlayStation was meant to be, like, oh, you know, cutting edge, or we got 3D graphics now. Not really cutting edge, it was more so just, we have 3D graphics. It was going to be, like, a big deal. And then you'd have games like this that come out, and it's like, is it really worth buying because it's in 2D? And it's like, yeah, because it looks fucking great. Yeah, people back then were really stupid about the new technology. But I guess this still technically is 3D. Well, technically, but it's like... It, yeah, if you're observing it, you wouldn't know that this is textures on invisible polygons, which allow them to do weird effects. I suppose if you got a gimmick that's, like, brand new, you probably actually want something that, like, utilizes it. Which... This does, but it's like, to the the layman, it's not as obvious. Yeah. I think this game actually had trouble making it to the States, because Sony at the time was very against games that do not show off the graphical capabilities at the 3D capabilities of the PlayStation. Oh, uh, that's right, yeah. Like, I should have brought this up in the Resident Evil 2 MIC Watch, because that game's US release was held hostage. Like, Capcom demanded that Sony let them put the Mega Man and Street Fighter games in the U.S. Oh. Otherwise, they would not get the Resident Evil games in the U.S. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Capcom ain't no one's fool. Except their own. <laughs> yeah. So, here's the Fleeman. They're... A barrel of laughs to try to hit in this game. As you can see, damn. Just wait, there's an upgraded version of the Flea Man that's even more annoying. Wait a moment. You seem human. Wait a moment, I sound too old to be this character. I've come to destroy this castle. Then we have the same purpose. I'll trust you for now. I'm Maria. Who are you? Our card. <laughs> Long Not pauses. The type I can see. Well, perhaps we'll meet again. If you live there. I think he's just stunned at how miscast this character is. Lady, it's it can be argued that I'm not alive right now, so. Well, no, he's like half human, eh, whatever. He's born of a vampire and a human mother, so I guess he's kind of half dead. Wait. 
But it's also why he doesn't have. He can wield holy items. Ah. And why going in water doesn't disintegrate him immediately. Also, I forgot to mention, probably because we were just too busy in awe over the voice acting, to mention Dracula's portrait in this game. How. Why did you miss the stopwatch? You kind of are going to need that for later. Oh, where was I? <laughs> oh, right. The Dracula portrait in this game. Like, in the normal artwork, like, he, Dracula just has normal red eyes. In this, I not red eyes, just normal eyes. In this game, they edited two dots over his eyes. Yeah. Which, in a C CRTV, what happens is the red dot bleeds with, like, the rest of his eyes, and you get a really good-looking red eye effect. But if you're playing this on an HD TV or emulating it or whatever, you're just going to see r two really jarring dots over his eyes. I remember seeing a post about that. Like, it's actually kind of stunning how that, that little pixel makes so much of a difference on a CRT. Yeah. I think it's because of the surrounding pixels. Yeah, so it's like when you when you when you say games are looked better I look worse than you remember. No, it's not rose tinted lenses. You were looking at it through a CRTV. Well sometimes, like sometimes people were very creative with that sort of thing and sometimes they weren't. Yeah. Also I still love that they kinda had to do that because the artist's illustration of Dracula in this game was just too beautiful to be menacing. <laughs> also, if you did not cheese that enemy with magic, um, he probably would have one-shot you. He's he, The enemy is a beefgate for this skip that you're about to see. Oh. So if you wait here long enough... Ah! So you get two pieces of equipment that are much better than they should be at this point in the game. Because basically this is like an this is an Easter egg that rewards you for doing really stupid stuff. Oh. Killing a far too powerful enemy and then waiting in the, at this elevator for like a year. So yeah, Jewel Knuckles is gonna take you through a good chunk of the Right side up castle. But his intelligence went down. That was the sunglasses. Exactly. I forgot about this. Yep, we get to see the best voiced character in all the video games. There's just a little Easter egg where you get to look at what's the name, Karen? Just Sharon. Sharon. Or at least I think it's just Sharon, like the River Sticks person. I just always pronounce Karen in Hades, so. I always thought it was Sharon. Oh. Oh yeah, they're. There's jewels, which we'll find a shop later, and jewels are exactly the only thing you can sell in there. Um, the selling system is kind of underdeveloped. Okay, that is Hellfire. You press up and then de quarter circle forward and attack, and you can either shoot fireballs, or you can hold up during the teleport to do what you just saw. <laughs> it's just literally uh, some Dracula moves. Yeah, I mean, this is the son of Dracula. Also, it's worth noting that Alucard, along with Dracula, have radically different designs than Alucard's first appearance in Castlevania 3. Oh, this fight. Yeah, because Dracula got redesigned, and Alucard's supposed to be basically anime genetics Dracula. That's why he got redesigned. How many gates do you need, buddy? Yes. So, there's some interesting ways to cheese this boss. One of them was, of course, just shield all the knives. The other is, you can use the stopwatch. The boss will freeze in time. <laughs> and he's the only boss that this affects. 
Also, that red rust item that you picked up earlier, that seems really useless because half the time you can't even attack with it. If you hit him with it, he can't attack. He gets cursed. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. So, this was supposed to be the next weapon you pick up. That was supposed to be your upgrade to the short sword. But we knew the secret, and now we have the jewel knuckle. Oh, is that kick attack just because we have, like, a punch weapon, or is that, like, something else? Yeah, that is an unarmed attack. Ah. You can hold diagonal down and then press the attack button to do a kick. A dive kick without the dive. Just a kick. It's like how Doctor Doom has foot. Foot dive. No, just foot. Yeah. Do not let these things hit you because you get cursed and that's really annoying. Yeah, I was gonna say, I remember them being pains in the ass. Don't these status effects do like different things in different games or. Yeah, it's rip seldom ever consistent. Curse in later games would drain your MP constantly. Poison in this game weakens all your stats to really shitty levels. And in later games, it just drains your HP like Poison would in anywhere else. And then, See, what else? Curse in this game actually makes it that you can't attack. Yeah, you can't attack. You can use sub weapons and spells, but you can't swing your weapon. Also, here are those books. Look, we're 3D. I think, yeah, poison was the one that got me. Because that it was just like, oh, it doesn't actually do poison damage. It's, you know, stats. It makes your, yeah, it makes your stats suck. They predicted how poison works in 3rd edition D&D. &D. <laughs> it's been a long time, old one. I'll be careful when you sit back down. You don't want to fall in that pit. Young master, I cannot so yeah, apparently John Wycliffe is hanging out in Dracula's castle for some reason. I really should say I'm interested in this whenever I go to a shop. <laughs> I go to my local game store to buy some rare game. I'm interested in this. <laughs> Will you take this Zircon? Oh, only credit? Okay. So, yeah, the first quest in this game is basically find the shop to get the item that you need to progress through the game, which is just a glorified shop tutorial. I should point out, because this player isn't really, that um, there are different damage types in this game. And the key to taking out know, enemies quickly is to know what type is most effective against which enemy. Like... These books, for instance, resist blunt weapons, but take more damage from cutting weapons. Ah. Meanwhile, um, he was short-sorting it through the beginning parts of the game, when I would have just used my fist, because all you really face at that point in the game are armors and skeletons who are weak to blunt weapons. Oh god, the curse. Oh yeah, they just do. he does like a stupid little animation on this card. He's just like, ugh. He suddenly forgets how to use weapons. Also, I love the PAL effects they use for the status conditions. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just a lot of neat sprite effects because these are just polygons that are have textures on them. I also remember they did a lot with his cape in this game. Where, like... All the items, like, change the color of his cape. In there's, fact... There's an item that allows you to customize a, it? Yeah, there's a cape you can buy that lets you change the palette. And knowing me, I, of course, ha have him wear a golden cape. Golden boy. <laughs> is the cape any good, or is it just, like, a 
it goes on whatever cape you're wearing. Um, the cape I think is like the third best cape you can get. Oh, okay, that's good. Because capes don't really do anything. They they're just linear progression of the constitution stat bonuses they add. <laughs> Meanwhile, armors and weapons all have like different effects. At least the more special ones and shields. Oh, they also know to add in canceling out a shield as well for that extra speed boost. Huh. Getting a lot of use out of this Marvel. More than I normally get. Oh yes, the, would... <laughs> the skeleton snipers. This series has some wild enemies in it, just like through and through. Lots of really creative skeleton friends. I swear, Japanese developers just love skeletons, because there's also From Software, who's taken a lot of creative liberties with skeletons. <laughs> also, the creative liberty of From Software usually making skeletons at surprisingly difficult beef gates at the beginning. So, there is wolf form, and you saw that elevator activated font, right? Right. That is the only time that font ever shows up. <laughs> wow. I yeah. never got that. Yeah, this game doesn't actually ever usually tell you stuff like that. Like, it never just, like, tells you what you've done whenever you... Well, I don't think yeah. it's not a, like, switches like that anyway. It's just specifically that place. Or event. Um, are they going for the clock tower? Oh, that was the save room. I, I mixed the clock tower and the save room doors. I love the tradition of the Medusa heads. Like, they're always in just really annoying vertical spots. I mean, they got... Players expect to be annoyed by Castlevania. <laughs> so, here we have these shortcuts that take you to various places. Their tell is the animal that's on top. Ah. Also, I should point out, these hallways are to disguise loading, and they completely admit that by having CD at the top of the room. Yeah, that was weird. Of course, as a kid, I didn't get that, but now it's like, oh, they're just literally telling you that they're loading. I mean, if you're going to do anything, that's a pretty elegant way to do it. Indeed. The Angelic CD. <laughs> there Four is. blood skeletons doomed to job for eternity. Oh wait, sorry, Blood Skeleton, I mean Crazy Bones. There it is, yeah. Show respect for Crazy Bones. I'm sorry. You treat your Crazy Bones with respect, Pantera. These background designs, by the way. Some really nice looking stuff. Oh god, yeah. I'm like just it? remembering that magazine that was comparing this negatively to Castlevania 64. Look what fucking aged better. <laughs> Spittlebones just exist to poison you and piss you off. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> anything but my marble. I have to marble race later. I have to say I love this marble run. So we meet again, Alucard. It seems so. As friendly as ever, I see. It's At least he didn't delay on you this time. This castle is different than I remember it. This castle is a creature of chaos. 
It may take many incarnations. Capital oh, I chaos. Trust my memories, huh? I love this explanation for why the castle keeps changing, though. <laughs> I love that this castle is basically just the House of Leaves. The, the, the castle in Castlevania is a character. Yeah, that's brilliant. Gotta wonder, though, does the castle, like, ever, like, communicate with Dracula? Does it, like, shift its features to be like, Hey, Master, what's up? <laughs> you think you could, uh, send somebody to clean this, uh, room down here? It's, uh, a little bit, uh, too much cobwebs, you know? Can't you just transform into a clean room? Alright, buddy. Also, never let these things hit you in a luck run. Yeah, in a luck run, I just say fuck it, soul steal, because I do not want to risk these hitting me. So luck run is like you have really good luck, but your other stats are all garbage, right? Yeah. Also, never ever under any circumstances let that spike ball hit you. Oh, it yeah. does massive damage, regardless of armor. In fact, I think most traps in this game ha do percentage-based damage. Ah. Look at this room! It's so cool! I know! Also, Puppet Sword, an enemy I just soul steal because fuck fighting my way through all those swords. Soul Steal, which is a pretzel motion and is by far your strongest spell in the game. Of course. It's a screen nuke that heals you. But it also takes up massive amounts of MP, which regenerate automatically anyway, so who cares? I gotta also, think, um, though, like, if if you're, like, new to this game, and you want to use that MP meter, like, how soon can you find out, like, what one of the spells actually is? Um, as soon as you get to the shopkeeper, he sells basically the inputs to spells, and he gets more of them as the game progresses. Oh, okay, so... Because it seems, it is, like, right there, but I'm actually wondering, it's like... It seems, it's just there, but when do you actually learn how to use it? But I guess it is pretty soon, so... Yeah. And even sooner than that, if you happen to, say, have game facts open. Because once you do the input... Like, you can just do it. You don't have to, like, get an item or anything. Right, yeah. It's just kind of funny how, like, that tutorialization is, uh... Is very... Like, that. it would not happen nowadays. Like, like that. Yeah. Oh, this one. Either he'll try to kill you, or he will forgive you your sins. And then this one. Either she'll cry about her sins, or try to kill you. <laughs> And in the Japanese version, um, if you get the confession, um, the guy leaves you behind wine. In the U.S. version, he leaves grape juice. Uh -huh. Oh, normal he would leave grape juice. Maybe that might be a PSP thing only. This is such a weird thing. This game is so strange. And that's why it's one of my favorites of all time. This is kind of how I would approach game development. I just put in a bunch of weird details that don't need to be in, but I'm just putting them in anyway because it would be funny. It kind of feels ahead of its time in that way. It's like, not that other games didn't do stuff like this, but th like for such a big game to have I was so gonna much say, strangeness. I was going to say, SNK yeah. definitely... T loves doing that. That's fair. Fucking oh, we accidentally have Leona saluting Chang. Let's make a canon that she has a crush on him. <laughs> That's true. That and let's see how many copyright infringements we can get away with. I think you're just describing so the uh, battle craze. Well, it is an SNK game in disguise. <laughs> also, yeah, the Sword Hunters have a very rare chance of dropping the Werebane. If you get that, um, that will probably take you through this entire castle. And the Upside Up castle. Ah. 
That's why the luck run is actually, like, interesting, because the items that you can get in this game are, uh, insane, but they're, like, a lot of rare drops. Yeah. Like, without grinding, the weapon progression seems linear. But if you're lucky, you get some really magical shit. Also, oh my god, what is the emulator doing to the song? Please stop. Oh, this is a discordant mess. <laughs> and it sucks too, because this is one of my favorite tracks in the game. Something's gotta go wrong. I mean, emulation sucks. Especially, oh, this is 2017, I thought it was older. Yes, I never, as a D&D &D player, I never understood this boss, because hippogriffs are supposed to be good. <laughs> Maybe it's just attacking Alucard, because, ah, vampire. Also skeleton painting. I wonder if maybe that hippogriff was something that Maria summoned. You're very strong. <laughs> she got past it just fine. You didn't come here to tell me that. That's why I wonder if it's maybe something she summoned, because she summons animals. Oh, I love this. Of the Belmont clan? Of course, but. Oh my god. And I'm sure he's here. If you see him, please let me know. As you wish, my lady. Thank you. So, you do know how to be a gentleman. You do know how to not pause before saying everything. Yeah, I think the ellipses are supposed to, like, convey that he's just really socially awkward. Right. But, I think it might be a Japanese thing that they're able to do better in Japanese, but here it just makes it look like he's having a blue screen before every conversation. <laughs> Does not uh, compute. <laughs> that should be, if I ever do anything with that uh character, that should be his speech patterns. <laughs> oh, the cut, cut lass. Lass. The cut lass is supposed to be your next upgrade, but since you have the jewel knuckles, it's just useless junk in your inventory that you can't fucking sell. And your inventory is going to get really cluttered by the end of the fucking game, so have fun switching equipment. Fuck! Oh, you can't sell things in this game? I forgot about that. You can, you can only sell the jewels. You cannot sell, like, weapons that are obsolete. You can't get rid of them either. They will just clutter your goddamn inventory. Oh. That is probably my biggest piss-off about this game, is the cluttered inventory. Just inventory in general in this game is pretty, uh... Strange. The, the yeah. aforementioned, like, healing by dropping items on the ground. Just... Because you gotta think, like, that's not even just obtuse in the way that you heal. You have to unequip a weapon to do that. Also, disposable weapons like the bombs, or the pentagram, or Dracula's portrait. <laughs> I don't know about that last one. That sounds great. Yeah, basically, Alucard's like, Picture of my dad, help me! and it suddenly appears and starts shooting eye lasers. <laughs> it is my... If I ever, in any playthrough, if I ever get a point where I can buy the duplicator, that becomes my main weapon, because I just spam it with the duplicator. <laughs> because it is just amazing. Yeah, if I ever take up streaming, I should do a fun run of this with you on commentary. Oh, yeah. So, Tire Fang. It's a piece of shit that lowers your attack stat by a lot. Don't that, use it. Is that the one that has, like, really high attack speed, or is it just garbage? It is just garbage. Oh. Uh. Its only attribute is that it does dark damage, which is effective against exactly one enemy in the PlayStation version of the Symphony of the Night. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. Actually, no, two. It's just one of them you don't want to kill, so you wouldn't use it. Ah. It, it would be something I'm not going to spoil yet, and the Goth Snipers. <laughs> Alright. So yeah, Dark is a shitty element, don't use it. So it's the worst attacking type in the game, and it penalizes your attack with no benefits. 
<laughs> what were they thinking with that, you know? Trolling. <laughs> they has to be, right? Like, they had to have known. Yeah, it has to be just the most, like, intentionally pathetic thing ever. But remember the randomizer run that I did? So, when I got the Kissigrim early in the game, the sprite that it used was the Typhlings. <laughs> so, that is the most extreme, just RNG ever. This game has, like, a bad translation, right? Yeah, okay, there's the... I'm not even gonna bother pronouncing this. Dilophallus? Yeah. So... The trick to the Dilophallus is you have to know which head is real. It's obviously the monster that's right in front of you. Intuition would think maybe the harder to reach thing is the target. No, it's just the monster. Oh. Ouija tables. Ouija yeah, Ouija tables, my favorite. Actually, I'd say my favorite enemy in this game is the Yorick, which we'll encounter much later. Oh, oh God, yeah. This emulator is based, like, this emulator is hearing the soundtrack through a hearing aid, I'd imagine. Because <laughs> I've heard what I sound like through my grandmother's hearing aid, because you can kind of hear that buzzing, sort of. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it just, when my grandmother first got the hearing aid, I just, I'm like, why do I sound so weird when I'm around you? Oh. <laughs> Ah, I'm being poked by the glass. This is this is the most I've ever seen Alucard get fucked up by a Ouija table. <laughs> Relatively, I mean. Like that enemy just is there for you to just kill and gain one experience point. So here's the Alucard equipment. Oh Jesus! I think it's a joke that works better in Japanese, but it's still funny. So oh. it's counterfeit Alucard equipment. But here's the thing: if you equip all of them, your luck goes up by 25. Oh, nice. Is that a lot in this game? I don't know. Yeah, that is a lot. In in a luck run, um, oh my god. Oh. Alucard becomes broken in a luck run because, remember, luck not only affects your critical hit rate, but your critical hit multiplier. Oh. So, equip two Lapis Lazulis, have the luck run, and the Alucard equipment, and almost every hit will be a critical hit for, like, a lot. Oh. You could probably chew through Garamoth's HP in an instant with that. Hilarious. The concept of something being frozen in time and still hurting you because you touched it is, like, bizarre to me, but, you know, video games. That was like a limitation of Dio's power in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> That's why Dio had to do the knives. If he touches Jotaro, he just dies. <laughs> So, Ulrox's quarters. Apparently, Dracula likes to share with other vampires. Is this the Colosseum? <laughs> oh, I didn't even notice that they're labeled. By the way, this is another really good track in this game. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, no. So welcome to the sub weapon room. Oh, the room of sub weapons. And yeah, um, it's a good thing it's labeled because it would otherwise be easy to get lost in this. So, these enemies, the Paranthropuses, in New Game Plus, they can drop the Ring of Barda, which. Anyone who has read the works of Tolkien, yeah, that is the one ring. Oh, right. 
and it is the best equipment in the game. It just boosts all your stats. So if you're doing a luck run, that stat penalty you take doesn't even matter because there's a good chance you're going to get the Ring of Varda. There's a lot of, like, talking stuff, and I think that's a localization thing only. Oh. <laughs> Jeez. Which hardly recovers any HP and is not at all worth the hassle to equip and use. <laughs> Although, I will say, there's this item in this game called Meal Ticket, which gives you a random food. It is really funny using that with a duplicator. Oh, boy. Also, Just a shower of random food. Shoutouts to, like, those enemies that are, like, people wielding, like, swords, but they're, like, also silhouettes. So you don't have to draw, like, a lot of sprites for them, but... You know, I don't know, it's just a neat concept, I like it. A lot of really interesting sprite ideas. It takes too long to get to this part of the song, but I st it's still... What a great climax for the song. I was say, I don't remember there being a funky song in this game, but there it is. It just takes forever to get to there, and you're constantly, like, going through rooms. The fact that the player's not saving all that much reminds me of when I was with Evil Homer, and I was doing a no-save luck run, and Evil Homer was just fucking begging me to save. <laughs> He's like, you're, you're dying, please save, and I'm just like, haha, Soul Steel goes... <laughs> What is the... what sub-weapon does he have right now? The lightning gun, which is exclusive to this game. It is... What? A lightning projectile that, um, bounces from enemy to enemy. I do not remember this. Nobody does, because it's a sub-weapon in this game, where sub-weapons are, for the most part, not that useful. Yeah, they kind of fall off, don't they? Yeah, compared to the broken equipment and magic you get. Oh yeah, the Owl Knights, where if you kill their little owl buddy, they just spend forever crying over them. And if you used a blunt weapon like the Jewel Knuckle, he would have died. Wait, why aren't you using the Jewel Knuckle? What are you using? That's kind of cool. Being an asshole is the most practical way to defeat this thing. The other most practical way to defeat this thing is to use a blunt weapon. Uh, what the hell? So yeah, these kung fu zombies, the Grave Keepers. He was guarding green tea, but in the Japanese version, it's sake. Ah, uh, of course. I have no idea why a game with all like these this blood and corpses have to have, like, four kids localization. It's very strange. Man, I can't wait to pick up the dark energy disc weapon. Well, yeah, what kind of, uh, rating did this game get? M. I think. No, there's no way this is a mature game. Like, that was, like, pretty strictly reserved for, like, shooters and stuff. There's a lot of naked and bloody bodies in this. I gotta know that now. That that sounds wild to me. It's... I'm looking at my copy right now. It's teen. Holy shit. Yeah, because it's like... It's pretty mild, all things considered. Like, even back then, it's like... Meh. You'd think a certain room in Ulrox's quarters would be enough to warrant an M rating. Or no, it was actually, no, in this level. There's like, I think you even saw it. There's like an operating table full of blood where you get the blood cape from. Oh. Which, the blood cape is funny because it just exists to strengthen the effect of dark metamorphosis. You know, that spell you hardly use because very few enemies in this game bleed. Right. be fair, like, it's it's very small things. Like, if it was something that, it, like, was very detailed or up close, I could imagine it being, uh, something that would end up censoring, but 
Or like just like background elements that are like small sprites. I can kind of see them getting away with it. <laughs> Who are you? Open Hell's Gate. Come forth, my servants. The scent of your blood. You're a Belmar. Crush this flea who invades my castle. <laughs> this is the only time in this game that he wears exactly the same jacket as in his artwork. I was gonna say, yeah, I forgot that he had a, an outfit change, but I guess it's temporary. Not in his sprites. I would have just soul steal from the start, but I guess go ahead, use the lightning gun. Okay, that actually kind of kicked ass. Wow. Yeah. I'm certain that was a Belmont. So he says he's the lord of this castle. Soul steal would have been faster though. Both of them just die. Well, maybe sometimes the Minotaur lives. You know, what? I appreciate the variety as somebody who wants to comment on random things. Yeah. At least we got to see the boss. We also got to see if the I lightning gun, which is just... I, I can't believe there's a lightning gun. That is super weird. And now we have the mist form. It's usable specifically to go through gates until you get the upgraded version where it's usable specifically to be a cheesehead. Who doesn't want to get hit ever. Oh, yeah. Well, this is, um... Because, yeah, this is based on one of the actual, like... Uh, like, vampire lore things, like, they could actually turn into, uh, mist yeah. or whatever. It's like a little vampires, bit of Vampires can turn into wolves, bats, and mist. And as a vampire, he can do that. Because, yeah, a lot of that kind of gets forgotten. It's mostly just the bat thing. Yeah. So, here's the Ernest Evans... Love ragdoll sprites so much. Here's the other Ernest Evans. That one's better. Wow. Oh, I forgot in the in English version they yell, "Take that!" when they kick you. Nice way. He just demoed. Ha ha yeah, that doesn't actually hit you, even though it looks like it does. <laughs> Not like and a the player demo Fury it. thing where he just instantly kills you. <laughs> no, it's the worst white ever. <laughs> Funny story about white. So there's this friend on the internet that I was talking to Sma about Smash with, and I was revealing that Mewtwo shared voice actors. Thank you for pausing for us, by the way, player. <laughs> and... At White and Mewtwo share voice actors, and I was sharing that with her, and she's like, wait, I know this fucker. He's the one who shoots you after you win. And keep in mind, she doesn't play fighting games, and I'm like, how did you know that? <laughs> There's always that weird, obscure thing, you know? Yeah, apparently her brother has a JPPSN account. <laughs> It's like, she never even heard of Fatal Fury, let alone a PlayStation-only version of it, and she knows who White is. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, just hit the floor. So, now that we have forms, we can go to the rest of the library. Can I give a shout-out real quick to the spellbook coming out of the background, despite the fact that these are all just... Like, I know I'm saying that, like, they're rendered in 3D in some fashion, but, like, they are just still images at, like, their normal size. So, they just have, like, the the model, like, scale up in a way that makes it look like it's coming out of the background. Me life. Oh, God, this... her voice acting? <laughs> I can't wait until we find our first secret wall with her. I do remember these lines for them finding the wall. Also, did they literally just get skip to the fairy without getting the bat form? That's cool. <laughs> the fairy is... Everyone remembers the sword familiar being the best of the familiars, but it's actually the fairy if you know how to break her, because she can just give you invincibility by accident. <laughs> what? There's like a bug in the way that she handles items where 
she can just keep potioning you even though you don't have any more potions. So you're basically invincible because when you use a potion, you have eye frames. Oh. So you're invincible and you're constantly recovering. What does that so she's at. I forgot the exact specifics of the glitch. Wild. So, yeah, we got the stone mask. Oh. Which is the most blatant reference ever. And Holy Rod, which is probably gonna take you through most of this castle from now on. I don't remember because this it does holy damage, and holy is really good because a lot of enemies are weak to holy because it's Dracula's castle. So <laughs> lots of undead and demons. That's such a weird thing to have like a damage type in a series like this where everything is like, yeah, like undead and demonic. It's like, it's like, that's kind of unfair in its own way. It's like, there's no balance Wait. there. It's just like, well, I mean, yeah, demons. Here's Lesser Demon, who is weak to this web- Oh. So this demon's gimmick is that he can summon other enemies. This is the only way to encounter the Mudman in this game. Oh. If you want to complete the Master Librarian's bestiary for, well, basically no other reason than to complete it, you have to let this demon summon the Mudman. I really thought you meant the SNK Mudman. I was like, is the guy with the mask? No, it's not- a really strangely popular World Heroes character. <laughs> so now we have Bat Form, which allows us to basically traverse the rest of the castle. Also, this form is used a lot in speedruns. <laughs> As you can see. Oh, this also uses mana too. Although I think nowadays everyone goes for the wolf form because they've discovered wolf tech. <laughs> I love that I could just say the sentence, wolf tech. Doggy tech. Doggo tech. I now have a new technique. I now have a name for the wolf technique. It's Doge coin. No. At least it's not the NFT. Nobody wants to do the NFT. Oh yeah, when you have the double jump, you can do a dive kick. It's mostly just useful for jumping off of enemies more than attacking them. I swear you had to use that for something in this game, but maybe that's just like a part of a sequence break thing. Sequence break thing? You can use this to basically avoid most of the final boss's attacks. Just keep dive kicking off of them. <laughs> And then when he's not attacking, spam Kissagrim because, yeah. I, he like, I forgot that there's just like statues with nipples in that uh, that room that you see a lot. It's a very kind of strange game they got away with. Just a classic skeleton. Also, that, if you noticed, when that fairy goes down too fast, um, she holds her dress down to avoid upskirts. <laughs> I've noticed a lot of characters in video games do that. Roll does that on Super Jump. Isabel does that in Smash when she jumps. <laughs> oh, I would have wait waited until I got the Super Jump to do that. But, yeah, up here is more stuff. 
I guess, yeah, you don't need the super jump for that, I guess. So yeah, more stuff for the fairy to use on you automatically. Oh, the, you get the super jump from here, I'm stupid. <laughs> Beat the game a million times. Mistake the super jump location. <laughs> By the way, my commentate my commentator prac partner, not practice, can attest I am good at this game. You a little bit. I he wanted me to really squirm. Broken version of it. <laughs> he wanted me to squirm through the randomizer, but he forgot that when you trust ARPA with RNG, terrible things happen. Terrible broken things. That's why evil Homer freaks out whenever random select gives me hero. To be fair, it's also, like, an RPG randomizer is a bit different in that you could just get broken items right away, like the Earthbound run that I did. It's like, yeah, you could just get a broken item right away and then the game isn't a challenge anymore. Yeah. Not quite Link to the Past in that way. I'm just remembering that Resident Evil 2 randomizer I did where I opened up a desk, 63 Magnum bullets. All right, I wanted to see some of that. I heard some good things about the Resident Evil randomizers. My favorite Resident Evil randomizer has to be the remake ones. By the way, those boomerang skeletons, if you get up close to them, they just cower before you. <laughs> All right, yeah. Also, those ghosts drop a lot of money. Okay, so this enemy is funny. That is supposed- the enemy name is supposed to be Malachi, not Cthulhu. Cthulhu is another enemy that's later in the game, and to this day they still haven't fixed that in later, more refined localizations. Wait, so there are just two enemies named Cthulhu, or...? Um, there are two enemies that use that sprite body. What we just killed that was named Cthulhu, that's supposed to be called Malachi, but they oh. switched that with the enemy that is Cthulhu. Jesus. And they never, like, bothered to change that, even in Portrait of Ruin. <laughs> oh, it's, it's stuck now. And Dawn of Sorrow. Here. Meanwhile, they fixed everything else. Like, all the items that were named after Lord of the Rings stuff got their proper names in the later localizations of Metroidvanias. Ah. Wait, we no longer have Kissigrim, we have Valmway. Oh, here's another sub-weapon room. Skill of the Wolf. I <laughs> think that's a dashing attack that speedrunners love to use. I see the player still sticking with the lightning gun, even though I want to see the cross in action, because that weapon's funny. Is that just like a boomerang thing, or is that a different in this game? I forget. Um, Alucard does a screen nuke with his cross. Right, yeah. I don't know how he uses the cross so much better than the Belmonts do, but he does it. Is it at least, like, more costly? It's a lot more costly. Yeah, I think sense. it takes like a hundred hearts. I don't know why he didn't bother teaching the Belmonts that though. Well, maybe not Richter because he already has the Grand Cross. It's funny to think like Richter's easily like the most powerful portrayal of a Belmont here, but here he is being a brainwashed little bitch. Actually, I guess that would kind of be Julius, considering what he accomplished. But we'll get on that if we continue Metroidvanias. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Bat Card. Now you can do credit purchases as Batman and <laughs> Batman and Robin. Damn it. So the Bat Familiar is pretty funny. If you are in Bat form, the Bat Familiar will fall in love with you and follow your every move. <laughs> and will defend you as you're flying. If you turn into... Oh, wait. No. What was the thing again? In any other form, like, the bat behaves. But if you're in bat form, it, like, 
Okay, we've been seeing this lady's crotch for how long? She <laughs> I was looking. It's like that's a strange image. Um thank you for the woman spreading marathon. <laughs> But yeah, and if you turn to the mist, the bat gets confused and fucks off. Oh, right. And then there's a, another familiar you get later on, where if you turn into the bat form right in front of it, it gets confused and fucks off. <laughs> this game is great, wow. I know. How was this not made by Team Craze? <laughs> Aside from the fact that you were too little to even consider game development. Uh... I wonder w if at least Knuckle Fighter was out by the time this game was released. Oh, jeez. So, yeah. I am so glad that they have the animals on the top to let us know which place we're in. Also, notice how the angel that holds the CD was replaced with old rocks in this room. Oh, I missed that, wow. It's a detail that's easy to miss, so I had to point it out. Wow, we took no shit from those Ernest Evans. Incredible game. Just amazing. It's actually it's really one of my like that people dismissed it back then because oh it's 2D graphics. Like... People are stupid back then. And their stupidity kind of had a detrimental effect on the future of gaming for a while, but nowadays 2D is back in vogue because the indie market is holy shit amazing. Yeah. So that says Holy Sword that's, like, strong against undead. Is it just, like, Holy Element that's strong against a lot of other things, too? Yeah, it is strong against demons, it is strong against undead. And... It's... Although there's one en Well, three enemies that resist it. And one of which you want to resist it. Because... There's... There's, um, there's a lot of, or I remember there's it being at least one, like, misleading item description in this game. It's one oh, of those there's games. several. Okay. So, I, I because remember of that game, vocalization. Yeah, the translation is just, like, bad. I think my favorite thing about this game, though, is there is a damage type that is so rare, even rarer than dark. Uh... Hat damage. <laughs> There is an item that lets you heal if you're hit by cats. There's one enemy in the game that does cat damage. Yeah. And it's in much later in the game. The Salums. Oh, yeah, yeah. They can throw cats at you. And in, in the PSP version, um, you can deal cat damage as Maria. <laughs> one of her sub-weapons, she just throws a kitty at you. I imagine this being like a Pokemon type. There's, you know, light and dark and... And cat. <laughs> yeah, they just cat as a damage type just for shits and giggles. Ridiculous. Mana prisms. I wish they weren't so expensive. It's like they knew what you can do with MP. Oh, it takes MP to do the super jump. Well. Wow. Yeah. If you can just spam mana prisms, you can break this game in half even more. Luck potion. Was that a pill? Yeah, um, because the 4 kids style of localization, they can't call them pills. They just call them potions. <laughs> it's just so much... uh. it, It's really stupid. That's a lard. And that is an actual knife. Dagger. Ah. And we got the S-Stock, which is an actual rapier. Also, Bastlard's pretty good in the early game because it has a very high rate of attack. Ah, I was like, you can just dab the shit out of things and kill them just from DPS alone. 
I wish there was more than three knives in this game because I do kind of like their attack patterns. Oh yeah, I was gonna say like that's in this game, right, where he has like the little like stabby motion. To one yeah. Of the weapons. Yeah. Also, we got a garnet. I think that means we just fucking lost in Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> Same company. I had to make the joke. Ah. Funny to think, like, Konami doesn't do video games anymore. They make their money entirely from Yu-Gi-Oh! and patchy slots. Ridiculous. I dread the day that Yu-Gi-Oh! goes under. Iron Ball? Yeah, it's a throwable weapon. Oh, you can become a me brawler. Yeah, literally. Okay, when I play through this game, I always sit in that chair. Just have a little conversation with all rocks before fighting him. <laughs> oh my god. So, yeah, um, Dracula ha is roomies with Count Orlock. <laughs> I always like this boss. Like, look at his po look at his stance. He has style. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And then there's this form. Hmm. This is probably the first legitimately tough fight in this entire game. Unless, of course, you know what you're doing and you have all this good shit that you can use against him. Right. Like, at this point, I'd have the shield rod and the uh, night shield so that I can just spam the shield spell against him. Shield rod gets really broken later on. I would say shield rod is the most broken weapon in this game. I've heard as much. That is a cool animation, Jesus. Yeah, even if it's a little Ernest Evans -y. This is ambitious also this... as hell, and I love it. Yeah. I really miss the days where video games weren't so hyper-competitive that you can just do actual labors of love. I'm not yeah. saying games these days don't have heart and soul put into them, but it's like... Like, the gaming market is so competitive, you have to be as efficient as possible. Like, with how complicated things are with development time and resources, you don't really have time to make a game like this unless you're in the indie scene. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't stop Kojima Productions from trying, though. <laughs> So about the, uh, the Saturn port of this game. Um, it's a disaster of a port, but you can't blame it, because PlayStation renders in polygons, Saturn renders in quadrilaterals, and this is a polygonal-based game. It just seems like the Saturn was, like, kind of... It, it kind of thrived on having really good 2D games, so it feels like this should kind of work, but maybe if you didn't yeah, like, execute it right? Here's the thing, though. This isn't really a 2D game. These are, as I've said, pro I probably repeated myself more than I actually think, and I'm gonna watch in the playback, and I'm like, <laughs> why won't I shut the fuck up about this? But, like, like I said, these are a bunch of invisible polygons with textures on them, and the Saturn does quadrilaterals. Like, this does triangles. This game is all based on triangle rendering. While the Saturn is square rendering. Ah. So there's a lot of like difficulties in porting that over. And the fact that it does square rendering is why the Saturn is so good at 2D games. Because, yeah, pixel squares. Right, yeah. So the Saturn, surprisingly, was not a good fit for this game. What's funny is the Saturn version is just also so suboptimally programmed, it is better to run it on emulator. It seems so strange like, to me because, like, there are a lot of games with, uh, like, much bigger sprites that have better Saturn ports than PlayStation ones, but I guess there's again, a lot more going because, on in this game, at the very least. Oh. Also, the Saturn has expansions for VRAM, which is how it's able to get, like, the CPS2 and SNK ports so well. Because you can have a lot more VRAM with the RAM expansion cart, and t arcade games need lots of virtual RAM because lots of shit goes on. Right. 
like tag teaming in Groove on Fight or the Marvel games. But no amount of VRAMing is going to save this the Saturn port from the difference in rendering. Because this game was like a flex of the PlayStation hardware. Like yeah. a screw around with what you can do on PlayStation, and then you're just porting it to a system that is very, very different. It also like incorporates a lot of uh, actual 3D elements very well. Like, the safe feature, and the doors, stuff like that. Yeah, like, those were clearly, like, triangle polygons, while the Saturn is used to square polygons. Also, Saturn has issues with native transparency, and this game has a lot of transparent effects. Are oh, you, they're yeah. Going, they didn't get the holy goggle. Oh, I, are they going to just show off the bad ending? waiting for you. So it is you. But why is a Belmont planning the resurrection of Count Dracula? Count Dracula rises but once every century, and my role is over. If I can resurrect him, then the battle will last for eternity. <laughs> my reasoning is I just want to keep playing Rondo of Blood. Why are they using a holy weapon if they're trying to kill Richter? So, there's a gimmick with this. Um, he's basically, if you kill him, the game ends early and you get the bad ending. But if you have a certain equipment, you'll see what's controlling him and you can fight that instead. That is a way to deliver unbridled wrath. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to think, there was probably a better way to iframe through the Hydro Storm. Oh, so just... yeah, in this form, he just everything he does is an item crash except for the cross. Although he will grand cross eventually. That was a hit sound. It's over, Belmont. So, the war between humans and vampires finally ends here. It's over, Jarek. What need for the shepherd when the wolves have all gone? My time on this world has come to an end. <laughs> Thanks. How dramatic. That's a canon ending. She just says potion after this <laughs> all stuff. How, like, obvious is it to do what you were describing to get the actual, like, rest of the game? Oh, really fucking obtuse. Oh, okay. I was gonna say, that sounds like a thing I would not have known other than the fact that someone told me. I literally only knew because I had, like, a magazine with a guide to this game on hand. It's, like, almost right. secretive, except it's, like, half the game. Yeah. I, like, even bumbling around on your first playthrough, I struggle to imagine how you would find it, or find out how to do it. Because it does require a lot more exploration of the castle, but a lot more obtuse exploration of the castle. Mankind continues to fight. But it is a desperate fight to stay alive. I suppose that he chose a life of warfare, since that was the only way he knew. Like you, father, he chose a path of destruction. Farewell, land of my birth. Never again will these eyes gaze upon your beauty. Okay. I was about to say, we better not be watching the credits multiple times. <laughs> It's like a Sonic Adventure playthrough. Oh no. Imagine Castlevania Adventure. Oh wait, there is that. It's a really bad Game Boy game. <laughs> no wait, Castlevania Adventure was... I'm trying to remember. There was one Game Boy game that was really good, and incidentally, Alucard was in it. Hey. 
And then there was the Adventure Rebirth, a uh, Wii download game that you can't get anymore, and it was really good. Of course. Shame, a shame to lose that piece of gaming history. Don't you love it when these technological advancements are, seem to be solely designed to just prevent people from playing games. Yeah. At the very least, I'm playing them after people are, after they've uh, run out of uh, ways to make money off of it. Yeah, and people wonder why emulation exists. Old rock fill at the top of the CD thing going, I'm not dead! <laughs> Okay, maybe I am a little. I'm <laughs> just a little dead. By the way, if you get petrified during your double jump, you turn into a gargoyle. Oh, is that what causes it? Yeah. Again, another completely pointless and funny easter egg, because it's this game. We got the library card and the attack potion, not pill. Potion. <laughs> a potion that you take with a glass of water. I hate it when I get migraines and I have to take my Tylenol potion. <laughs> Wait, so if that's the library card... Wait, what's a library card do? It teleports you to the library. Oh, right. I thought you like, give and it that... to him and be like, Hey, yeah, this is proof that I ordered a book. Uh... <laughs> the library card entitles you to unlimited tickling, Master Alucard. Oh, thank you. I mean, I'm interested in this. <laughs> I'm interested in this Gucci Gucci Goo. <laughs> So, yeah, we can have Alucard wear a head bandana now. Combined with the sunglasses and we just have full-on urban Alucard. That's not how you spell bandana, is it? I think it had one extra N in there. Oh dear. This game's localization strikes again. At least it's not Countdown Vampire's level of bad. We don't have stun globes and t 12 gouage bullets. <laughs> And untranslated messages. So, Claymore, it's a two-handed sword. That means you don't get your shield. Don't use it. <laughs> How should I take care of all these vases the best way? Okay, so Moonstone. Um, I forgot how time is told in this game. I think it's like just game time. If it's considered quote unquote night, you get stat buffs. And then Jane Bain tries to steal it from you. <laughs> so here's this obviously fake load and save them room. Let's see where that takes us. Nightmare. Mother. That voice! Alucard, it's you! I'm coming, Mother! I'll save you! Mother, your body's really long. Yeah, yeah well. Wow. Alucard, don't come here! But How mother, long do they suspend you like this? It's all right. If my death can save others, I'd gladly surrender my life. Mother, no! She sounds really broken no. up about this. Yes, Alucard. Watch me die, and remember always my last words to you. Yes, Mother. You must despise humans. They are to be your prey. What? Better for them to die than to let them compound their sins. Begin by slaying that one over there. <laughs> no, it wasn't like this. What's wrong? Alucard. My mother never said such a thing. What do you mean? 
kill them and bring them happiness. No, you're not my mother. What kind of demon are you? <laughs> really create a ploy on her part. Free of my spell. I like that. This voice. Oh my god. Death is too good for you. Like she's supposed to be like a tempest or whatever. She sounds like a cartoon librarian. God. Yeah. <laughs> Also, um, a succubus taking the form of somebody's mother, that's... that raises concerns. <laughs> I, I don't know if this lady's, like, got a lot of morality in her. That's not even her best scream yet. I smell your blood. You're a vampire? Could it be... <laughs> that strength... That beauty! You're the son of Lord Dracula! Death in the dream world will set your soul uh -oh, God. wandering Get for ready. eternity, demon. Wait! I beg of you! Ah! <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> that never fucking gets old. <laughs> I'm sorry, was you expecting to be like... Uh... Yeah, you should you should hate humans and then you'll be like, I will destroy and hate all humans. <laughs> I will destroy them and I'll hate them. <laughs> like, uh, I, I am. I am Alucard. <laughs> Seriously. Imagine this cutscene, but if instead of being a succubus, she just turns out to be Goldman. <laughs> <laughs> No, my mother never sounded so monotone. Alucard, my son. And you must protect the life cycle. <laughs> um, hi, hi, Skylaworm. Bye, Skylaworm. <laughs> that was a boss. Well, that's an appetizer for the boss. Ah. Actual Skyla. Which is a Greek monster, because, of course, a naked woman attached to wolves would be a thing in Greek mythology. I think that one died even faster. <laughs> um, you kind of killed her a bit early, to be fair. I think the game expects you to fight her much earlier. Ah. Uh. But she's not hard, anyway. The challenge is supposed to be the fact that there's water, which, until you get the Holy Relic, wait till you see what that looks like. You take damage from being in water. Because he's half vampire. Ah. So, yeah, I remember this game's difficulty being kind of all over the place. Like, especially yeah. in the, uh, the upside down uh, castle. They admitted that they didn't really have development time to balance the difficulty, so they were just like, whatever. Fair. They preferred to just put in more shit rather than balance difficulty. Yeah, it's like, they put all this effort into weird, like, easter eggs, but, like, game balance, eh, you know, as long as it's fun, which it is, so, I mean. Yeah, this is still one of my favorite games ever, even if I can just beat it with my eyes closed. It's, okay, it's, maybe not that far, but yeah. It is not a game that you play, like, entirely for bragging rights, it's, it's just fun. I mean, I guess you can brag about the glitches that you've performed. Oh, that's true, yeah. That there's a speedrunning side of things. And also... And this yeah. game is so broken, speedruns are amazing. Oh no, our friend the lightning gun. It's gone. <laughs> My lightning gun, gone forever! <laughs> <laughs> I Move can't make that scream. The move attack in this game is wild, like in general. Just that you have transformations, the the wild double jump, or the super jump, rather, uh, and a double jump, and then like the weird like shine spark with the bat form. I think even the wolf has something. And taking damage, oh, like because yeah. your knockback is determined by how much damage you've taken. And if you're like nearly killed, you basically shine spark. <laughs> right. That is also used for several skips. Also, when you stumbled over movement, you I almost thought you were going to say Moomin Tech. 
That's just gonna... Imagine if you can have Moomin as a familiar. It would just suddenly bust out a gun and kill people. Because that ja that Moomin anime, there was a Japanese Moomin cartoon, I'm serious. Just has random violent shit in it happening. What the fuck? Yeah, um, when I saw clips of that on No Context Violence, I was taken by surprise. What, what is going on here, by the way? We're just fighting frogs and toads. Just, we killed a bunch of guys by pushing a box up against the leak? This is... This is a uh, silly place. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so, this is part of the obtuse shit that you have to do to get the real ending. Oh, we got the secret boots. Guess what they do? What do they do? They upscale your sprite, that's it. What? They make you bigger? <laughs> yeah, they just scale you up. Like, if you were to go into the Mugen's, the top part of your Mugen CNS. Like, is it just that's... taller, or does it make them just bigger? Taller. Oh, okay, I thought you just, like, he becomes large. It's slight, actually. Yes! <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I love this voice. Not as much as the Succubus, though. I don't think anything's funnier than that one. <laughs> Wee! I hope the weird-sounding fairy man didn't see my ass there. Yeah, um, that one spot... Grinding that over and over is the key to being able to afford the duplicator. Ah. That and grinding with the jewel sword. The merman statue lets you get the fairy man at the other side of this map. Wait, what? That's all it does? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because this game's bizarre. <laughs> you came all the way over here to get an item that allows you to come back? Well, it summons him on the other side of this level. <laughs> Which you do to get the item that allows you to survive underwater, so you can come back there and get the rest of the stuff. Oh, like a different part of the level. Okay, I thought you meant like yeah. literally in that room. He's like, I'm oh, not no. going to show up unless you pick up that statue. No. Also, if you're doing a luck run, it's in your best interest to grind off those mermen, because in the very beginning of the game, they're worth good experience. I should mention the experience system in this game. Um, enemies have levels. If they're at a higher level than you, they yield more experience. If they're at a lower level than you, then they yield a lot less experience. So there's anti-grinding. Not that you need to grind in this game. Right. So if somebody's at the maximum level, which I believe is 99, they're probably cheating because of the anti-grinding system. Ah. So Power of the Wolf, that is the... That allows you to run through enemies and kill them as the wolf, I believe. <laughs> powerful. I mean, wolves are pretty powerful. I wouldn't fuck with one. <laughs> That's true. This emulation, this song, the pain. It just seems to be the music for some reason. Like, the, the sound effects yeah. sound fun, but yeah. the, the music's kind of, like, tinny. It's, it almost sounds like a Game Boy Advance port. It does, yeah. Although it's not quite, um, Harmony of uh, Dissonance. Oh, yeah, the Metroidvanias did start on the GBA. Well, the sequel Metroidvanias. Yeah, yeah. Harmony Dissonance, which, I mean, I we might actually eventually get to, I guess, but that game that was basically just like, let's do Symphony of the Night again, because it was so popular, and uh, yeah. didn't really quite figure out why. So, Holy Mail, which protects you against Holy Attacks, which, again, two enemies that do that. <laughs> And at least in this version. Okay, so but it's still, one of them is Richter, right? One of them is Richter, and the other is the 
the sniper, the goth sniper. I think in this game they have a really weird name that I can't pronounce. Ah. Oh, they're Claymore, why? Yeah, two-handed suck because you can't use your shield on the other hand. And shields have good benefits, like increasing your defense even passively. Is is there like overhead swing in this game, or is that just like Aria? Aria. Okay. Okay. Here you have the stabity stab. That's the special move with this. So here's more Gurk Ernest Evans. Gurk also, they're armored enemies. If you, it's named after the weapon he's using. Of course, yeah. I had a feeling oh, wait, it no, just I... still makes me laugh because I'm a child. Oh wait, I think he actually uses Kukri, or at least that's what drops from him. And then there's this other... No, I think he also drops the Shotel, which is like a boomerang sword. Okay, so there's this weird secret where you have to go through one way as the bat and the other as a wolf. That's how you get the jewel sword. I was wondering, which, I was like, what the fuck is this? Which, when you kill an enemy with a jewel sword, it adds various jewels to their drops. Wow. It is a way to get more money because selling jewels is the only thing you can sell and not the rest of the shit that clutters your inventory. These things would randomly just come back in Dawn of Sorrow. I remember those things, yeah. Yeah, their enemies are interesting because they have like this huge library of them and then like mix and match them between games. Like, there's some mainstays, but then there's a lot of just, like... This one was in, like, two or three games. Yeah, and a lot of these enemies are recycled from, like, the uh, older games, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, it was always weird seeing, like, the SNES Oon enemies here. Oh, yeah, there's, like... Those are just, like, the plants, or, like, the vines. Yeah. The plants that would probably be the most embarrassing things to die to. Yeah. Although I would still say the most embarrassing thing to die to in the history of Castlevania has to be the coffins from 4 that don't even really try to attack you. <laughs> and are just goofy in general. Okay, so here's... Oh, they're not going back to do the convoluted thing yet? Oh, I think they're going for the Holy Relic. This is one of the, the shorter videos we found, but man, they're, uh, they're real They're still through. showing up. I mean, the player is, knows what they're doing. Although I, I, I do say, like, do have some... It. I mean, like, speeding through it, but also showing a lot, yeah. Yeah. Although I do have some criticism, like... About this wall. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I was waiting for that, honestly. <laughs> All right. Love this character so much. I forgot what I was about to say. Damn it. <laughs> Something about uh, the Holy Relic, or? Oh yeah, they're going for the Holy Relic. And yeah, he would not appear if you didn't have that merman statue. Is his cape like camouflaged? Yeah, he has the crystal cape, which is a transparent cape. I am not sure how they did that, like, effect for that. Because it's separate for- it has to be- Like, there's the opaque thing behind the transparent cape. How did they do that? Uh... I think you- like, yeah, because I've done some of the stuff like that in Mugen. Like, 1.1 specifically. Or, uh... Oh yeah, yeah, 1.1. Where you allow to use like transparencies, but it's like pretty ambitious for a game like this, like this old. Uh, yeah, so we got the Holy Relic. Did you notice what the Holy Relic was? Oh no, oh, it was a snorkel. Yeah. Jesus. Remember that now? The Holy Snorkel. <laughs> Is that like a weird translation thing, or are they just being silly? 
being silly. I'm pretty sure even in the Japanese, it's probably some melodramatic name, but it's a <laughs> snorkel. What's so holy about it? I think it's a placebo effect. <laughs> like, maybe when Dracula was teaching little Alucard how to swim, it's like, but dad, I'm a vampire. The water will destroy me. If you hold this holy relic, you will be protected. <laughs> <laughs> he just hands him a fucking snorkel that he, like, got from a, a Walmart. <laughs> this just reminded me of a scene in Dark Sea 2, and now I'm thinking, Here, Alucard, this will explain everything. Head falls off and he goes into his second form from the first <laughs> Castlevania. <laughs> Rector, did you kill Maria? Did you date Maria? Oh. It's a fight against death again. The only way out of here is death. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, you just man. got me out of tie right now. Fish head! Hell yeah. Also, um, their bullets that they shoot are surprisingly damaging. Oh, ninjucks. Actually, those are tonfas. They fucked up the translation. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I gotta love how I... I got to deliver that in the most, like, smart-ass way possible. <laughs> well, dry way possible. <laughs> like, I didn't get a good look at the sprite, and then it's just like, well, of course they did that. Yeah, don't let the fish heads hit you. They hurt. And there's another surprisingly strong enemy, the Killer Bass. What? But there's like a couple spots of water where you can run into Killer Bass, which are just giant fish that hurt really hard if they touch you. <laughs> this entire game is a goof. I love it. It's the best shit post ever. It is, really. Yeah, it's, like, Alucard's pretty well armored at this point. He took 13 damage from that bullet. Which is not a lot given his HP, but still. Whenever an enemy manages to do double-digit damage to you, you listen. <laughs> yeah. Because everyone else is just, like, one or two or three or five. Look at you beating up those frogs with tonfas. Funny thing is, these are res these are like staple enemies. They were res those sprites are from Rondo of Blood. Oh yeah. And so is this ape skeleton. Oh, <laughs> leading him over here. Yeah. Again, this is mandatory to get the full game. Oh, is it? Yeah. Have fun figuring that shit out alone. And they're not going in there because- oh. The pentagram that is probably not going to be used. <laughs> Why is there just a pentagram as an item? Because it's a bomb. It's a screen filler. Oh. You get to do that super that one really weird Clone Zero edit has. <laughs> I'm confused about the path this player's taking so far, but it'll probably make sense eventually. Oh, they just <laughs> want to get everything. I'm not talking to you. You sound weird. I'm just going to use my holy relic. My dad gave me this holy relic on my fifth birthday, and with it, I've swimming has never been so fun. <laughs> Oh, there it is. That should... Oh, it's killer fish. Yeah, don't let that thing touch you. It hurts. Of course. They literally just went into that room to fight the killer fish, didn't they? Yeah, what the fuck? What are we doing? 
all map squares in six hours, which is admittedly very impressive. They're not doing the bestiary, I don't think, because they missed the mud man. Yeah. Unless there's something else I don't know. They do a glitch that causes the mud man to appear. Also, those frogs have a rare chance of dropping a healing item, a pizza, and the flavor text for it is New York style. Oh, Keep in mind when this game takes place, uh, where New York was not even a thought. Oh, right, yeah. Even Old Rock's up there above the CD is shrugging. <laughs> So here's this really good atmospheric song that you will never hear much of. Oh, they have the holy water. They know how to cheese this boss. So here's the skull version of a Guns N' Roses album. Oh wait, it already was a skull. Wait, yeah, the holy water. Oof. Just drowned Cerberus, not Cerberus, Cerberus, <laughs> in the holy water. Also, I just noticed there's a guy stabbing himself in the background. <laughs> what? I missed that. Yeah, there's like a body that just stabbed itself. Oh, the Salem Witches, which hurt surprisingly hard. <laughs> Probably because you don't really have magic resist equip yet. I think it's because you don't have cat resist. But I think oh, it's the wrong enemy. Oh, yeah, those are the Salomes, which I wonder if those were also named Swap, because I think the Salome would make more sense to be a Salem Witch. I'm not even sure why they're called Salem Witches. <laughs> Just random reference to a horrifying moment in history. So, these are Ukobaks, but in this game they're gremlins because we can't have actual references to demonology. <laughs> but pentagram, I don't know. I got nothing. This, this translation is super weird. And the actual demon card we just fucking picked up! <laughs> no clue. Sadly, we're never going to see the nose demon because this is the US release. Oh, yeah, yeah. So there were like two extra. There was, like, the Nose Demon and there was another fairy, I think? The Song Fairy, which is indistinguishable except for the fact that if you sit in a chair for too long, she'll sing you to sleep. <laughs> it's adorable. Why did they feel the need to do this? Other than that, just... I don't know, they're just um, being cute. We're, we're the PlayStation. We can have people singing now. We can have MP3s. Is this guy trying to do a really bad Stimpy impression? <laughs> Ren impression, sorry. <laughs> like holding his nose is like, ah, let's see what happens. I am the demon. So, Venus Weed. I'm pretty sure that was actually. They made that a monster in Yu Gi Oh! 2. Of course. And it was like one of the earliest monsters. 24. Back when. So there's the power of Sire. That <laughs> is just a, a painting of your dad that shoots eye lasers. So the Ring of Ares is. It's got the number 24 written above it. It's because it gives you 24 strength, but lowers your defense by 24. Is, is this some sort of a reference? Um, probably. Knowing this game. Ridiculous. Since I'm on the internet, let's see. Uh. It confers the strength of 24 men, so it gives you 24 defense. Ah. I, strength. 
and gives you the opposite for defense. Because uh, 24 strong men just can't defend themselves whatsoever. So we got the shit, Take Mushroom. Get out of here. Karma Coin. If head, um, you get a screen filling attack. If tails, you get struck by lightning. <laughs> you actually flip a coin. Also, Combat Knife, which pretty decent weapon for this point in the game. It's a knife that also has a sword attack if you want to use that for some reason. Huh. Bloodstone. It, 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 it increases the effect of dark metamorphosis. Oh, you right. can actually just straight up have a dark metamorphosis build in this game. Which should come in handy against all like what, ten enemies that bleed. Was that a were skeleton that was walking around like a chicken? Mm hmm. Right on. I'm not sure how one becomes a were skeleton. Is it somebody who dies after a skeleton bite? <laughs> Same way you become a were hog, I guess. Dr. Robotnik just rips off all of Sonic's flesh and he becomes a were skeleton. Also, yeah, slimes are immune to a lot of things. Holy's not one of them. Of course. Oh, yeah. I will say that in the Saturn ver- Oh, fuck! Okay, they salvaged it. So, in the Saturn version, there's no transparency on the echo effect. Somehow, it actually looks better without the transparency, and is one of the few effects in this game that does. Weird. Like, without the transparency, it looks really cool. Also, that is the only time you're going to use echolocation in this game. I was wondering... More disposable weapons you'll never use because it's not worth the effort to use them. <laughs> also, yeah, um, if you kill their cannon, they just get scared and try to fuck off. Sp oh. Now, yeah, you need that to, again, complete the game. Oh, do you? Because, ob yep, ob to shit. Oh, here comes Power of the Wolf. Yeah, this is... That... that uh... I forget the enemy's called already. The, the, two, the two guys holding the skeleton cannon. Like... Bone Arc. Bone Arc, yeah. That's like a wildly, like, detailed enemy design. For like, you have to have, you know, different occurrences for when you kill one side versus another. Like, depending on what's left. And it's like, that's a lot of detail you have to go into for an enemy that, like, is really kind of unnecessary. Welcome to Symphony of the Night. It is amazing. I am interested in that how this player is keeping the demon around. That is normally a card I have exactly to push those switches and that's it. So, yeah, monster vials are one of the more interesting disposable weapons in the game. They summon a monster to fight for you. Not worth the effort, though, to use. It's a random monster, I assume? Uh, monster vial 3 is a skeleton. Oh. So, Hellfire Beast. Um, that thing's name is actually supposed to be Amducious. But again, we gotta avoid demonology. What? Later games do call him Amducious, though. 
this game. It's like this translation. I think this guy also is something that references demonology, but for kids. I thought for a moment he was going to equip the tire thing. Oh, Alucard. Hmm. Also, yeah, did you notice when you equip all of it, your name changes to Alucard? I didn't notice one. Well. So if you're an Electron, that would have probably been three critical hits by now, and he would have been beyond dead. So here's the Discus Lord, an enemy that's exclusive to this room. <laughs> who will angle draw his dark energy discs at you. Ballroom Mask, which I think is just a worse version of the Stone Mask. <laughs> and Ice Brand, which is an ice sword that's good against fire enemies. There's a couple of those, right? I will say, the, the disc attack is pretty damn cool. Oh, I love this guy. And he shows up in a couple of games. Also, that death animation. Jesus. Bye! Fuck it off my own dimension. Oh, the shadow's in the wall. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Okay, I m mixed up Harold Shield and Cheese for a moment and thought it was Harold Cheese. I, I kind of did the same thing. I was like, is he going to wield the cheese as a, a shield? What's going on? <laughs> the cheese stands alone. Oh, they're getting ready for the boss. And what a boss it, it, it will be. So, real quick, equip the a la carte weapons and then, uh, don't. I don't know. Tag yourself on the skeleton that's staring at us in the back. <laughs> the skull. I'm Thornweed. <laughs> what? Walk so, Walk Armor has the potential to give you the best overall defense in the game. How's that? It give its defense increases with the more map squares that you have discovered. Oh, okay. Also, fuck yeah, Legion. Although it's Grand Falloon now. Which is basically the same word. Legion rolls off the tongue better, though. Yeah. I fucking love Legion. It's just an amazing design. Also, this arena is something. Not one of the more uplifting arenas in this game. Also, this boss is one of the reasons I would assume this game was rated M. What you didn't get to see is it rained down corpses that are streaming. Oh, jeez. Don't remember that. And then... They walk towards you as zombies. You know, this kind of reminds me of a monster f from a supplemental D&D monster manual. It's like a giant walking graveyard what? that just grabs people and stuffs them into it. Wow. You don't see that in a lot of, like, D&D stuff, which is a shame, because that was one of my favorite D&D monster designs I've ever seen. That is a concept, I'll give you that. I'm, I'm kind of there for it. What the hell? You didn't know that I can fire Pookin? It's been a while since I played this one. Just he's got a uh, Arthur's like powered up fireballs, and then also yeah, like the the carpet flame. Let's look, shout out to that demon scoring the coup de gras back there. <laughs> Not every day you see him attack at all, let alone kill somebody. Like the demon card just sucks so much <laughs> outside of the button. Who knows, maybe if you're patient with him and level him up all the way, because familiars do have levels, maybe he's just suddenly really good. He's like, um, Terry Hints from Lisa. 
He sucks at the beginning, but whenever you actually have patience with him, he becomes the best character. <laughs> There's hidden speedrun tech that involves leveling up the demon all the way. Nobody bothered to do it, though, so nobody discovered it. Oh, I didn't know... Wait, they're weak to ice? Even though they don't have any way to feel cold? Yes. They have no skin, but they're weak to ice. I give up. Well, I mean... You know, if they had a lot of clothes on or whatever, they'd be pretty strong against ice, but they're skeletons. That's like the opposite of wearing clothes. Is not having skin. You know what? I just... I give up. <laughs> that is the final stage of Skullgirls. Everyone is a skeleton. <laughs> they bear all. <laughs> you want a naked character? Well, okay. Mortal Kombat 12 introduces nudality. Scorpion's the only one that does it, and he has a, and he just becomes a skeleton. <laughs> oh Christ! Tattoo assassins. <laughs> I like the guys with the tridents are just kind of hanging out. They're just there, waiting to be in Hades. <laughs> Movement tech in this game is so funny. It's like, just watching someone use all of it efficiently just, just bonks his head, turns into a bat, and just zooms across the screen. You do have to wonder about the logistics of this all. <laughs> Alucard just w wondering him to, to himself after the room, what the fuck did I just do? <laughs> just like, he, he shows up in front of Richter and he's just like, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> or do all like half vampires do this, sir? Well met, my son. Can you please choose a more sensical way to visit me? <laughs> Alucard, how do you get to this castle? You know, I just jump up there and bonk my head up against the ceiling. And go flying sideways with a bat. Alucard, I don't think we can ever traverse this castle's new form. Alucard just does all this shit. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, at least one of us can, I don't know. Um, they're going the wrong way if they're trying to get the holy glasses. I think they were just trying to get that map square unlocked. This is like a I'm... weird 100% run, kind of. This would probably be how I would do it when I'm rusty with the game, to be fair. What is happening? <laughs> Quick, ask the boomerang skeleton for directions. <laughs> you go up to him, he just starts cowering, you're just like, uh... I'm not gonna figure anything out now. I think the skeleton cowers before Al- Oh, getting all this. I think the skeleton cowers before Alucard because of how Alucard approaches the skeleton. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say he was cowering because of the way the music sounds. It hurts my that ears. Had to. I don't understand what's happening to you, Alucard Cowers. So we're unlocking all the map tiles. I guess we're trying to get efficient use out of the walk armor? Um, I think you need to have at least 190% of map tiles discovered to get the full ending. I hate that I understand what you mean when you say that. Because that doesn't actually make sense. Yeah, if you're watching this and have never heard of Symphony of the Night, I'm sorry for the seizure that you are probably having right now. <laughs> this is casual, 190% of the map unlocked. Don't mind me. 
<laughs> you see, this game was actually ghost written by Scott Steiner. <laughs> this game's a genetic freak, and it's not normal. You can tell Alucard's not normal, by the way. He keeps banging his head against the wall. God damn it, I'm just picturing Alucard, like, right next to Richter. They say that all men are created equal. You look at Richter, and you look at me, and you know that statement <laughs> is not true. <laughs> Card starts explaining how there's 200.06% of the map, and Richter's just trying to count on one hand that he gives up. <laughs> and Maria's just like holding the microphone, going, What have I gotten myself into? So, did you find Richter? So, how the fuck did you get in there, Maria? But I found a Belmont. Really? So he is here. And then I killed him, but, but we ignore that. With the enemy, <laughs> with the Lord of this castle. So he is here. Holds up Richter's severed head. That can't be true. You're wrong. I, I, I must go now. Okay, bye. <laughs> it's not even like, like we met along the way, like going different directions. She was just up in this dead end, just hanging out. How like... the fuck did she get in there? Look at this room! <laughs> she also could turn into a bat. Richter, look at my new ability. No! <laughs> Funny thing is, there's an unused bad ending that, for whatever reason, also got localized, and you can hear it if you just listen to the audio files. <laughs> um, there is an ending where... Well, from what the audio implies, Shaft takes over Maria. Oh. And he, he's just like, such power from such a little girl. Oh. Uh. Just stop for that one guy. I guess could have been also something to use for that unused Maria boss fight that never happened in this game. Because it happens in the PSP version, although it's like a mid-boss. But in here, like, there was a plan to be a Maria boss fight, but that went unfinished. Also, plan for a Maria playable character, and that was unfinished until the Saturn version and the PSP. Wait, why was he His... holding the sword, or what was that? Um, I think that was the cape being weird. Oh yeah, okay, it's just... It, it looks so strange with that transparent effect, and I was like, is he holding, like, a, a cane sword? Like, what is he doing? He's... He, he's testing out Bloodborne weapons. So it's not enough that you have to do all that, but now you have to hold these two that just give really cryptic clues. And then this. How the fuck are you supposed to figure this out on your own? Maybe it would have made more sense than the Japanese text? Maybe. Because I know Castlevania II Simon's Quest, um, the translation is really shitty and everybody just tells you bullshit that doesn't make any sense, or even flat out lies to you in the US version of that. Right. Just so that you can't beat the game while renting it, because you won't know what the fuck to do. Oh, that rental bullshit again. Uh... Just wanted to skin my own bat knees there. 
nice wave dash to get those items. Funny thing is, he does show up as an assist trophy in Smash, and for whatever reason, I keep mishearing his suffer me as suck my dick. You've mentioned that. Also, here's this track that you never get to hear, really. Because it's exclusive to this room, which is just a catalyst for a cutscene. Ridiculous. Card? That voice, Maria? I'm sorry, you were right. He has joined forces with the enemy. So it was a Belmont after all. But someone must be controlling him. Whatever we do, we can't harm Richter. I would have started with that. But he must be stopped. I know. Well, here. Take these with you. Here, take the glasses from They Live. If you wear these, you can see beyond evil illusions. Thank you. Tis best then if you pray for the soul of your friend. <laughs> I wonder why this room's upside down. <laughs> so that that's that's how you, you actually find out about the demon controlling him, is that she gives you glasses and she's like, use this to look through illusions. Like yep. that's that's what she gives you. That's yeah. okay. My good friend Roddy Rowdy Roddy Piper told me to use these. He also beat the shit out of me while yelling put them on for some reason. We had a five minute fight scene in a back alley. Oh, you can't use the life apple. do it as fast as I would. So yeah, if you just spam the button, it just sounds like you're tickling him. What is going on? Um, he just did the Sword Brothers spell, which is extremely glitchy, and you can do that to do some really ridiculous skips and go well beyond the 200.06% map completion. Wait, Wait. That Wait. Oh, he, he did the dupe oh. glitch! Oh. He did the fucking dupe glitch! <laughs> I'm interested in this. Wait. Can you explain this in any way? Um, yeah. So, remember when I said the Sword Brother spell is really fucking glitchy? Right. It can also be a catalyst for the dupe glitch. Yeah, we just witnessed the reincarnation of Missing No right here. Oh, Jesus Christ. Why would that cause, like, an item glitch, though? The Sword Brothers spell is the Twilight Zone. <laughs> so, oh god, I'm looking at all the fucking glitches. There are so many of them with the Sword Brothers. Oh. So the integer glitch requires the player to have at least one jewel in the inventory and the Sword Familiar active, and works in the Saturn and Xbox Live versions as well as the PlayStation Original. By performing the brothers and t then talking to the librarian while the animation is playing, the player can pause the game on the librarian's buy menu, which is something that's normally impossible. Oh. So, by doing this, um, you have fucked up your pause menu and you have duplicated a jewel to infinite proportions. Right, okay, I can see how that works. That's successfully pulling this off results in an integer error, which turns the number of items backwards from zero to its maximum value of 255. 
This shows an inventory amounts in the engine are stored as an unsigned 8-bit integer. Obviously, 255 joules rather than one is useful, and the easiest way to afford the duplicator. It should be noted that the gold counter stops at 999,999 gold, and any money above this is lost, so selling more than a million golds worth of gems is useless. I did notice whenever he tried to sell more than, um, like 99 of those, uh, gems, it turned into, like, E2 and E3, and it's like... It turned into like a hexadecimal yeah. number. It's brilliant. Yeah, I was gonna say, this is basically the reincarnation of Missing No. Unbelievable. And I cited that from the Castlevania wiki to give due credit. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm actually interested in learning more about that, but... Well, uh... Yeah, um, I've watched enough speedrun videos to know that the Sword Brothers is synonymous with fucking up the game. That's really weird. I wouldn't expect that to be such a big deal, but that little animation. You can you, you can fuck up your save file with it as well. Oh boy. And the most famous thing though is you can add rooms to the castle. What? Yes. By going to the lower left door of the castle map. You know that space? that was originally that is only used for Saturn content in the Saturn port. Oh yeah. Um yeah, you can walk right outside the map oh. by using the sword glitch. It doesn't work in the Saturn version because that place actually is used for something. Right. So here's the clock tower, which per as per clock tower traditions is annoying. <laughs> Speaking of which, we should do an MIC watch of the Clock Tower series. Oh, yeah. Because the sequels get really funny. Especially 3, which I don't think anything will prepare you for that. I don't know anything, so I'm, I'm gonna go in blind on that one. We just picked up 3 items, but I don't know if uh, we can rattle off what they all did. Um, we I know the shield is decent. The weapon you've already outclassed. And then it was Ice Mail? Yeah, Ice Mail is strong against ice attacks, which is... Um... The Frozen Shades and I think a couple other, but ice is not a common type. Oh, and then there are these these uh, candles in midair, like you're deliberately supposed to double- or like, uh, drop kick them, I think? Yeah, they're there to dive kick. That's ridiculous. Or attack in your familiar form. Dropkick. That'd be an interesting thing to see Alucard do. Wrestler Alucard. <laughs> How do I do Alucard's um, Stone Cold Stunner spell? <laughs> he also has the people's elbow for no reason. <laughs> Alucard dressed up as Angel. I'm interested in this. Imagine if KOF started getting, like, cross-franchise guest DLC. They've we got just so have many characters, I can't even really imagine it. Yeah. We just have Team Konami, which would be, like, Alucard, Sparkster, Pyramid Head. <laughs> I mean, we already have, like, Team Akira. That would imply that Cronin and Keo would be on the same team. St no, Starflail is not the weapon I was thinking of. I think it's the other side of this that will see a very interesting weapon. Yeah, um, that room is a bitch to unlock. Yeah, was, was that what he was sending the uh, switches for? Yeah, you have to keep hitting them until they click, while the Medusa heads are attacking. <laughs> You're a little late on that. Axe armors, fuck those enemies. I know, axe, flea, flea armor. Flea, flea armor, fuck those. Forgot about flea armor, damn. 
So here are the Cloaked Knights. They have an extremely rare chance of dropping their Heaven Sword, which is a really weird throwing sword that you can do a screen filling special attack with. <laughs> you could do the Taste the Rainbow attack. I do like how most of this commentary has just been you pointing at something in this game and explaining how fucking weird it is. And I love it. Like, I mean... Jesus. This is why I was the best possible partner you could have had for this. <laughs> well, maybe that and T. T would have been good, too. I mean, if Saber was here, you'd just sit there and talk about, I don't know, something else entirely. <laughs> You see, um, what Saber would do was is recount the time he was in a martial arts tournament and he just beat the shit out of a blue person by shoulder ramming him. <laughs> and then talk about this weird guy who's afraid of vanilla ice cream for some reason. <laughs> this lady that tried to fist bump him for some reason. I was in this Coliseum, and there was just this weird clown person. I think his name is Master Wanker. Is really suspicious looking. <laughs> Thanks, lady. Uh... Here's Healing Mail, which heals you very slowly. <laughs> Don't use it. Brilliant. And it's by steps, too, so if you're doing the sandpaper walk, no healing. Hey, that's their way of making that's their way of making you appreciate the walk cycle, maybe. Gives <laughs> better healing if they want that. Also, I like that enemy where like it's just this armor and when you break it, like the soul comes out and you fight that. Yeah, um you fought this enemy earlier, remember in the tower when you were climbing up in the way to the library? Oh, yeah, yeah. But they didn't have that. It's only in this point in the game where they do that. Also, sometimes the sword enemies drops. I forgot what it was, but it's a really good sword. The sword souls. Okay, here's an enemy they did not bother to translate. Well, boss. So, Karasu Man. They couldn't be asked to just call him Crow Man. Also, that's this boss. Brilliant. <laughs> No matter what, this boss is just a pathetic pushover because he has no poise, but his attacks take forever to come out. Ah. So, yeah, Karasu Man is just the meme boss of this game. He is a boss that even the cotton candy thing from Yoshi's story would facepalm at. <laughs> Nice little introduction with those torches there. Yeah, that was always cool. Even though you never really give it time to introduce itself, you just skip through everything with Alucard's movement tech. Right. I completely did not pay attention to the fact that they switched back to fairy. They no longer believe in the heart of the demon. <laughs> I love this long play, even though I don't really 100% understand everything they're doing. It's it, it just seems perfect, though. Okay, now we can do iframe cheese. Oh, well, fire mail. And it's strong against fire attacks, and the main source of fire attacks we just kind of killed. <laughs> oh. Poor old Cerberus. Oh, those are the Ukobacks, but those are... we'll see them again later. And the Lantern people. But I th think the next time we meet them, we're gonna run into Ice Lantern people. Ah. So here's this room that's just full of fucking power-ups. Oh my god. Taking all the power-ups! Based on this position, I thought, like, uh, Dr. Light was going to give you the Hadouken. <laughs> so now we have the ghost card. It sucks. Oh, that little, like, ghost guy. Yeah, yeah. 
I do like the familiar. It's adorable in a strange way, especially when you turn into a bat and it's like, what the fuck, and leaves. <laughs> I always found it weird that you can enter that room, like, if you enter this as Richter, there's a bunch of random items there that you can only use if you're Alucard. If you enter it as Alucard, you'd get completely different items. <laughs> oh boy, find the mail. And that is the strongest pure defense of the armors that you have right now. Unless you actually bothered to money grind, and I think which this player already kind of did with the exploit. I fucking love they did the item dupe glitch in this long play. <laughs> that that was great. Do you appreciate that? Like I said, if I ever do a Pokemon MIC watch with you, I wanted to be the one to play it so I can do shit like this player's doing to it. Absolutely. That sounds amazing, actually. I want to do the Mew glitch, I want to do the Missing No glitch, I want to do the everything. <laughs> you killed me once, but now I'm more powerful than you could ever imagine. Answer me. Why is a Belmont planning the resurrection of Count Dracula? Count I'm Dracula bored, man. Rises, but once every century, and my role is over. Because frankly, I'm just horny. Then the battle will last for eternity. Are you gonna power the mist through that? Okay, thank you. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it's glasses. Oh, what are we doing? Is there is there another bad ending that I'm not aware of somehow? But now feel my unbridled wrath. <laughs> I don't yeah. So you can just hold it. Yeah. And it, there's an even dumber upgrade way later on. Um it's over, Belmont. Again. So, the war between humans and vampires finally ends here. Again. What need for the shepherd when the wolves have all gone? My time on this world has come to an end. <laughs> Why are we doing this again? Are, is there a bad ending I'm not aware of where Alucard's like, Oh fuck, I forgot to put on the glasses. Maybe I should have used those things she gave me, I don't know. Oh wait, there actually is a dialogue, I forgot. Maria is going to be in this one, I believe. Alright, yeah. And she's going to be like, What the fuck, why didn't you wear the glasses? Why'd you think I gave them to you? Damn! And Alucard just responds with ellipses. <laughs> She's gone by the time he actually responds. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot. Oh, where are you? Might be suffering from a concussion from all those headbutts. So you made it. Alucard, how is Richter? Oh, he's great. I'm sorry. <laughs> I see. Thank you for stopping him. Do you suppose that this too was fate? Capital so fate. So your journey is over as well, then? No, not until I learn what caused Richter's madness. I understand. Well then, may the gods guard you along the way. Farewell. You as well, Alucard. Goodbye. Not picture her muttering dumbass under her breath. <laughs> it's good a save icon. Yeah, the save icon is like constantly changes. Oh. And it's 
Fun fact, that save screen, it shows, like, what it would look like in the PlayStation memory card menu, too. <laughs> so, yeah, that icon somehow just constantly changes. Which, again, more flexing PlayStation hardware. Ridiculous. So, I think we're going to do this proper, I hope. Unless there's there some other, other <laughs> ending where you have the holy glasses equipped, you see the orb, but you still kill Richter. Alucard, get with the fucking program. Maria's just like, I'm done with this shit. <laughs> it's the secret Alucard gets the shit slapped out of him ending. <laughs> I had to stop Richter. Maria just blankly stares at him. You've defeated me. You've killed me. Wait. He does sound like him. Look at my angle draw. <laughs> I became a line. Behold, Dracula's ultimate plan. Badly aged rendering. <laughs> I thought the castle was just gonna disappear again. It was like... Shit, I thought that was the right thing to do, damn it! Open my donut! Behold, copy and paste! All of a sudden it shoots a laser beam at the moon. Alucard, for saving Richter. Alucard? The same Alucard who fought alongside my ancestor, Trevor Belmont? That was over 300 years ago. No time for small talk. Is the person who controlled you in that castle over there? It's not really small talk, is it? Yes, I think so. Maria, take Richter and leave here. I'll finish this. All right. Good luck. I can't believe we've been fucking demoted from being in our own games. And someone and... can find where the fairy's arms are. <laughs> and with that, we're now entering the other half of the game, and I think that should be a good point for us to take a break. Yeah. 